Hello everyone, Chaotic Neutral here. Today I'll be covering a recent change made by Rockstar Games that may sound good on its face to some players, but is actually completely idiotic, makes no sense, and worse still, it may negatively impact the entire community rather than actually solving any problems. You see, Rockstar has recently updated their community guidelines, specifically the section on fair play. Let's take a look. Fair play. Playing fairly is integral to an enjoyable experience for everyone. Cheating is disruptive and counter to the spirit of friendly competition at the heart of our online games, while griefing can ruin the fun by creating a negative environment for one or more players. Both behaviors can lead to the loss of player privileges. We define these behaviors as follows. Cheating, gaining an unfair advantage by using cheats, exploits, hacks, or other third-party software. Griefing, intentionally annoying another player or interfering with their experience and progress by using the game in unintended ways, e.g. spawn killing, stream sniping, driving the wrong way in a race with the intention to disrupt. The first part of this section is fine. Obviously, you shouldn't be cheating in online games, so I won't be discussing that part at all here. The issue is the second part. Griefing in GTA Online is so poorly defined that it's arguable that almost nothing in free mode, short of literally using a mod menu to explode everyone, is actually griefing. The phrasing of this section doesn't help clarify things either. It states that intentionally annoying another player or interfering with their experience and progress by using the game in unintended ways is griefing. But what exactly is unintended? Keep watching and I'll lay out why this is the most dumb, brain dead, pointless, and potentially harmful rule they could possibly add. GTA Online gives very few guidelines about what is considered acceptable behavior, and even those guidelines now conflict with one another with this new rule in place. For example, let's use one of the most contentious subjects in the entire game, destroying cargo. Many, maybe even most, players would consider this griefing, and it's widely regarded as a dick move. But since the game outright tells you to do this, it is by definition intended behavior, and thus impossible to classify as griefing. However, that's not going to stop people from reporting anyone who does this to them, since it's very annoying. This could result in someone getting suspended or banned for what is quite literally intended behavior. Here's another example. This time, let's combine the previous example with one of Rockstar's own definitions of griefing, spawn killing. Let's say someone destroys your cargo with an oppressor Mark II, which is commonly seen as one of the most obnoxious things another player can possibly do. Once you respawn, you manage to snipe them off their oppressor. Your blood is boiling at how they just wasted hours of your time and cost you millions of dollars, so you begin absolutely obliterating them with your sniper rifle, and spawn kill them until they rage quit the lobby. This would be seen as a justified action by almost everyone. I don't think there's a single player out there who would unironically say that getting revenge on someone who just noob-tubed your cargo with their rocket bike is griefing, quote-unquote. But under these new rules, that's exactly what it is. The situation becomes even murkier when you consider that even by Rockstar's definition, destroying cargo is not griefing, but spawn killing is griefing. By adding these new rules and failing to adequately clarify what constitutes griefing in GTA, Rockstar has created a situation in which everyone involved has the potential to get banned. The player who destroyed cargo might get banned because other players dislike people who destroy cargo and might report them. The player who spawn killed the cargo destroyer might get banned because spawn killing is now an explicitly named unintended action, and they're actively interfering with another player following the game's instructions and punishing them for doing so. Now let's add even more confusion into this situation by adding an anti-griefer into the mix. 
Regardless of whether they saw the entire situation unfold and know that the oppressor guy is being spawn killed because he destroyed cargo, or whether they joined the lobby after that and only sees one player spawn killing another one, they're going to choose a side in this battle and unfairly influence the conflict in one way or another. Let's say they side with the guy who lost his cargo. They make their way over to the battle and begin helping him spawn kill the oppressor player. Now, in addition to spawn killing someone for taking part in intended behavior, you have two players teaming up on someone and breaking the rules in the process. Or, more confusingly still, let's say they go help the oppressor player because all they see is them being spawn killed and they want to help level the playing field. Together, they turn the tide of the battle and begin spawn camping the player who just got his cargo destroyed. In either case, you would have one player doing something that most people would consider griefing, but technically isn't. One player doing something that most people would not consider griefing, but technically is. And a third player helping one of the other two spawn kill their opponent into submission, which would be griefing either way, at least according to Rockstar. That means that in theory, all three of them could potentially face a ban for simply getting into a gun battle in an online crime simulator, which makes no f***ing sense. This entire scenario and the potential resulting bans make even less sense when you consider the fact that after being killed by another player, you have the option to ghost them, which makes you unable to damage each other, or you could simply go into passive mode. Because of this simple fact, anyone who gets spawn killed dozens of times is actively choosing to not take any of the options provided to them to escape the conflict, and is essentially providing implied consent to continue fighting. This means that despite being specifically named as griefing, if you look at it from an objective point of view, no fight, no matter how one-sided it is or how many times each player has been killed, can be classified as griefing since all involved parties have agreed to take part. Otherwise, you would also have to apply the same logic to friendly 1v1s, which would mean that fighting your friends at the airport is, in fact, griefing. Confused yet? Well, buckle up, because it gets even worse. Consider the specific mention of stream sniping. Adding this as an explicitly named griefing behavior is rendered completely asinine by one simple question. How do we know who's stream sniping and who's not? How is anyone supposed to know if someone is actively stream sniping or if they just happen to be in the same lobby as the streamer and went after them because the game told them they're doing VIP work or cargo or whatever? Is anyone who kills a streamer now stream sniping? What's the criteria here? One kill? Ten? A hundred? Do you have to consistently follow a streamer from lobby to lobby and attack them in each one to be considered a stream sniper, or is it sufficient to just get a single kill by pure luck and upload it later for the lols once you realize you one owed a streamer? There's also a very high chance that at least a few players who get killed while streaming are going to get very, very angry and report whoever killed them for stream sniping, which, while obviously ridiculous, could be perceived as being true, even if it's complete and utter bullshit. The streamer would even have video proof, and since there's no way to tell if the player killing them is actually a stream sniper, or if it's just some random who shot at them for the hell of it, it's purely the streamer's word against theirs, and that's assuming Rockstar even bothers to investigate rather than simply being lazy, taking the report at face value, and making a decision based on one side of the story. And we all know Rockstar has a history of being lazy. All adding this example will do is lead to baseless accusations, unfair bans and suspensions, and ultimately will result in damage to the credibility of GTA streamers as a whole due to the endless finger pointing that will undoubtedly ensue because of this. Rockstar has not only explicitly named certain behaviors as unacceptable, but also chosen the worst possible examples and completely left out any detailed description of what actually defines these behaviors, and as a result they've left them completely open to interpretation. Almost anything could be seen as intentionally annoying another player or interfering with their experience and progress, even things that the game outright tells you to do. What's the limit for when you're considered to be spawn killing someone, for example? Two kills? Ten? Fifty? 
What if they're willingly fighting back and not trying to leave? What if they attack you first, but they suck at the game and they keep coming back for more even when the score is 45-0? Is that griefing? If it is, who's the griefer? The one that started the fight or the one defending themselves so well that the battle becomes a one-sided curb stomp? Or perhaps both players are griefing in their own way and Rockstar will simply ban anyone who takes part in PvP of any kind outside of deathmatches. What's an intended way to interfere with people and what's not? Killing CEOs who are doing VIP work interferes with their progress, but also rewards anyone who does it with a decent payout. Is that griefing? Is joining a heist and demanding a 50% cut griefing? After all, that would be interfering with another player's progress on purpose, since you'd be reducing how much money they're earning. Destroying cargo interferes with other players' progress, but you're explicitly told to do it anyway. When, if ever, is destroying cargo considered griefing? Is it all about intent, or do you have to repeatedly go out of your way to destroy it just to cause trouble? How would anyone even know if that's why you're doing it, and would it actually even matter, since it's literally intended behavior, even if the community doesn't see it that way? What about bounty hunting, stealing vehicle exports or air freight, swiping other players' heist preps, or sabotaging other people's nightclub missions to benefit your own nightclub? All of those actions interfere with others, and while the game straight up tells you to do these things, a significant portion of GTA players consider at least a few of those things to be griefing and won't hesitate for one second to report you and try to vote you out of the lobby if they can. GTA Online is a terrible game to apply such a broad definition to, since half of the missions in free mode involve interfering with other players in one way or another. It's also not reasonable to make blanket statements like, no spawn killing, without adding additional context, such as whether or not actions taken beforehand by the supposed victim would justify repeatedly killing them. If someone destroys your cargo or blows up your car, are you supposed to just sit there and take it, or are you allowed to fight back? And if you are allowed to fight back, to what extent? What's the limit? Are you only allowed to kill them once because otherwise you're literally spawn killing them? Is there a time limit between kills? These are all questions that need to be answered now, before anybody gets banned. If Rockstar wants to go this route, then they need to clarify what even constitutes griefing in a more clear way. They can't give mixed signals about things like destroying cargo and then say that interfering with other players' progress is against the rules, especially while there's still open debate to this day about whether things like destroying cargo are actually griefing or not due to the explicit instructions to do it but complete lack of any significant reward. Banning griefing in games with clear-cut rules and objectives makes sense. Everyone knows that intentionally dropping a ton of lava on another player's base in a PvE Minecraft server is griefing. Everyone knows that team killing in Counter-Strike is griefing. Both of those games have very clear guidelines for what's okay and what's not. In a sandbox PvPve game like GTA Online, with so little guidance as far as what you're even supposed to be doing and so many objectives that would be considered straight-up griefing in other games but aren't in GTA, having such nebulous community guidelines is outright dangerous and unacceptable. I foresee many, many unfair bans and suspensions in the near future based on this new rule, unless we get some much-needed clarity. To Rockstar and its employees, if you're watching this, Stop giving mixed signals. Clear up the gray areas regarding griefing by giving us more defined guidelines. Half-assing an update to the rules in an attempt to placate people who are upset that they got killed in a game about violent crime is the worst possible solution, and will only result in further harm to the very people these rules are supposed to protect. If some random idiot on YouTube like me can write this script while taking a dump at work, there's absolutely no reason why a AAA gaming company can't take the time to actually apply some critical thinking and write up more developed community guidelines for one of the most commercially successful games of all time. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.